R C N C C P C S A R C C P T O. Makes perfect sense, right? Right? Driver ratings on Assetto Corsa Competizione can be a little bit complicated to wrap your head around when you've not actually looked into them properly. However, they can have a large impact on your overall experience of the game. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Traction Channel, where today we are going to be taking a deep dive into the world of ACC driver ratings, looking at how you can improve them, what they actually mean, and crucially, how they can open up a world of better opportunities. So fasten your seatbelts. Your driver rating shows up in the top right hand side of your screen the very first time you play Assetto Corsa Competizione. It's split into seven different subcategories, which all contribute towards your total rating. When you first play ACC, you'll be introduced to each specific rating element separately, and will have to get to a certain level, 50, on each one before unlocking the next. Oh, and I should also mention, each score is a rating between 0 and 99, so don't go busting a lung to try and reach 100. Let's go through these seven categories in chronological order from when you first launched the game. The first rating you'll need to gain is Track Competence, which is shortened to TR. This one is super simple. You earn medals by completing consecutive clean laps of a circuit. For each circuit in the game, there are three medals you can collect. You get one medal for doing a single clean lap with no mistakes or off-tracks. You get a second medal for completing two consecutive clean laps. And you can gain a third and final medal when you manage to complete four consecutive clean laps. This one isn't about speed, it's about simply learning the layouts. There are currently 19 circuits in the game, including all available DLC, meaning that with three medals available for each of the 19 circuits, there are 57 medals in total to collect. So how many do you think you need to get in order to unlock the next element of driver rating? Nope, just two. This is an irreversible rating that you will gain over time, and the more medals you collect, the higher your rating will become. If you want to build this rating quickly, I recommend jumping on circuits that you know well and that ideally are short in length. Don't push too hard, it will just increase your chances of invalidating a lap. Take it nice and easy and use the driving assists at your disposal. Another tip for you, if you do it in the rain or at night time, you actually need to complete less full laps in order to obtain the maximum 3 medals, so if you're feeling confident, try doing that instead. The reason the track competence rating exists in the first place is to stop people jumping onto a random server on a track they've never even driven before. Could you imagine someone starting from the back of the grid at Monza and not knowing the first chicane existed? What? Sorry? That's everybody online? Oh. So as I was saying, two clean consecutive laps on any circuit of your choice and you will unlock the next rating. Consistency. This measures your, you guessed it, consistency as a driver, not in terms of pace, but in terms of how you drive. The more consistent your driving is, the safer you will be in a racing scenario. The way this rating works is that it measures how similar your speed, inputs and rhythm are from one lap to another. The more consecutive laps you can do in a similar fashion, the better your consistency score will be for that particular session. This may sound very obvious, but the best way to increase this score quickly is to pick out very specific reference points in terms of your braking and turn-in markers and stick to them. If you brake at the same point every lap, accelerate in the same fashion, and use the same amount of curbing, your rating will improve vastly. Just remember that you don't have to be super fast here. Pick spots that you can comfortably match on every lap without pushing too hard. Also, don't panic if it takes you a few laps to find your rhythm. The game only scores you on your longest run of consecutive consistent laps in any given session, so the more laps you do, the better. Once your rating reaches 50, car control is unlocked. This is very similar to consistency in many ways, but it also takes speed into account, albeit in a small capacity. Your CC rating measures how often you are overdriving, and how often you are not driving fast enough. Overdriving is effectively a way of saying you are trying too hard. If you are needing to constantly correct slides, oversteering, or use lots of steering angle to get a car turned around a corner when you don't need to, understeering, then you are driving in a manner that isn't well controlled. The smoother you can be with your inputs, the better. If you want to increase this effectively, you want to drive similarly to how you did for your consistency rating, closer to 90% attack rather than 100%. However, if this pace is a little bit too slow and the gaming is telling you to hurry up a little bit or push a bit harder, try changing your reference point slightly. Break a little later for each corner, try and get on the power a little bit earlier, or use a little bit more of the track. This rating is difficult to cheat, so to speak, so you really do need to drive well if you want to get a high number. My advice here is quite simply to practice and really learn a specific car and track combination. Then, once you're up to speed and can reach a decent pace, jump into a hot stint session and find that consistent rhythm for as long as possible reach 50 and you should unlock the remaining four elements of your driver rating. And these ones require more than just driving on your own. These are Pace, PC, Safety, SA, Racecraft, RC, and Competition, CP. Let's take one at a time. Pace is another rating that is straightforward to understand. 
In ACC, you can take part in special events. These events consist of hot lap, hot stint or super pole sessions with changing car and track combinations for each season. By taking part in these events, you get given an overall time and therefore an overall position for that specific event compared to other drivers who have also attempted the event. The pace rating takes into account your highest placing in any given season, so to improve your pace rating you need to finish as high as possible. As the pace rating only takes into account your best result from each season, I would recommend doing as many of these events as possible if you want to maximise your score. When it comes to your pace rating, three P's reign supreme, and these are practice, perseverance and patience. If you practice well, your pace should generally be stronger, whilst perseverance and patience come into play due to the nature of these events. To get a good score, you don't actually have to set the stopwatches alight, you just need to finish the event and try and avoid crashes. Many people give up early if they make mistakes when pushing for the ultimate lap time and putting themselves under too much pressure. Try not to panic, because simply finishing in one piece without huge spins and crashes will end up resulting in a decent score. Next up we have safety, and much like iRacing, this is about avoiding incidents with other drivers. This is calculated by pitching trust points against online behavioural warning points, shortened to a very catchy OBWP. You gain trust points by running in close proximity to your rivals without erratic driving, losing control and of course making contact. You gain OBWP when you have contact with another car, and yes this does include when it's not your fault. Don't panic if you do get wiped out though, everyone does occasionally and you can still reach a safety rating of 99. And this is why trust points are a thing. The more clean racing laps you do whilst battling other cars and the more races you finish, the higher your score will be, even if you do end up having the odd bit of contact. Not only that, but this rating is also calculated on a running average, so every time you complete a new race, your oldest race gets dropped off the score. I would always recommend building this offline first. Not only are the AI customizable and a bit more predictable in terms of their movements, but getting yourself a decent SA offline will put you in cleaner servers with a higher average safety rating online. And of course, when you race with other players that also have a higher safety rating, you are less likely to be unceremoniously wiped out, so therefore you can maintain a higher rating. Equally, if you get stuck in servers with lower SA drivers, chances are you will be getting wiped out more often and the vicious cycle will continue. If you're struggling, race offline and try and do longer races to maximise your trust score as well. It can become quite easy to get hung up on your exact score, but honestly there is no benefit in doing this as you will always be left frustrated when someone hits you. One of ACC's most popular game developers, known as Iris.Drives on YouTube, recommended thinking of this rating in groups. For example, if you're above 90, then it's an A. 75 to 90, and it's a B, etc, etc. Thinking of it this way allows you to aim for a rough target, rather than driving yourself crazy going for an individual number. After three or four reasonably clean races against the AI, your safety rating should reach 50, and once that happens, you will be unlocking a big one. It's Racecraft, or RC. There isn't a way of cheating the system with this one, as it takes into account your ability to race and keep up with the drivers around you, depending on what their racecraft rating is. So, for example, if you can keep up with someone who has a much higher racecraft rating and stay in their bumper for 5 laps, your own rating will increase significantly. If you then go on to overtake them cleanly and beat them to the finish, your rating will soar. This also applies to defending. If you can hold off another car cleanly for a number of laps, then your rating will increase, and the amount it increases depends on the racecraft rating of the other driver. Again, try very hard not to get hung up on this one. Basically, if you race well and race clean, your rating will naturally grow, and if you start crashing into people or dropping back through the field on a regular basis, your rating will be a bit lower. Any tips? Well, I'm not going to teach you how to become an all-round better racer in this particular video, but what I can say is that again, doing this offline at first will help you find your appropriate level. That's not to say that setting the AI difficulty level to zero and overtaking them all the time is going to increase your rating, quite the opposite actually. ACC is smart enough to take AI speed into account, but what I would say you can do is find the level of AI that you are at in terms of pace, and then start a longer race from the back of the grid. Pick off cars carefully one by one, and the more you improve, the higher you can set the AI difficulty, and therefore the higher your rating will be. The final of our 7 sub ratings is CP, which is your competition rating. This one is super straightforward, it's all about the results you get in the official online competition servers. Much like your I rating on iRacing, nothing else counts towards this score other than where you finish, and as I said, it's only valid when competing in the official servers, so no AI racing for this one. All I can say is practice, race cleanly, race consistently, and be patient. There's not much more I can give you on that one. This is a culmination of everything you've learned from building up each of the other six categories. Now it's time to put that into practice. So, you now have different ratings for various aspects of your driving skill, and they're all ranked between 0 and 99. I know, let's give you a total score based on a generalised average. I wonder if that's ever been done before. Your TO is your total rating. 
And this isn't just a number between 0 and 99. This is an overall score between 0 and 10,000, well, 9,999, that places you in a driver category ranging from bronze to platinum, and gives you a plaque ranging from amateur to professional. Now, although the specific numbers you need have never officially been confirmed by ACC, it's generally believed that a score between 0 and 8,000 gives you a bronze license and an AM plaque. 8,000 to 9,000 gives you a silver ranking and a pro AM plaque. 9,000 to 9,500 gives you a gold license and a pro plaque. And finally, 9,500 to 10,000 gives you a platinum license and a driving god plaque. Just kidding, it's still a pro plaque. Just so you're aware as well, you do have to maintain your score for 250 kilometers of driving before gaining your promotion. So, for example, once you reach 9,500, you need to stay above that score for a good few races before you will receive your rating change, but when you do, the game will inform you as you're driving. Now, it's worth reiterating that you don't have to be perfect to get a Platinum. I, for example, got wiped out and forced to retire from my last esports event, dropping me from 99 to 98 in a few categories, whilst I also have never completed a single online special event or official competition server race on my main account, meaning I have an incredible score of zero for both. Yet, I still have a Platinum ranking. Basically, and I'm going to say it one more time, try your best not to get hung up or super stressed about your specific driver rating scores. Of course, it's fun to go chasing a 99 or try to maximise these, but always remember that if you race well enough, your scores and ratings will look after themselves. Just before I leave you, here's a few general tips to bear in mind throughout. First of all, pick cars that you are comfortable with and they are easy to drive if you want to build your scores quickly. Secondly, pick circuits that you know and like if you get the chance, but I'd always recommend learning as many circuits in the game as possible, as this will make you a more versatile driver moving forward. And finally, if you want to learn the tracks without any pressure, or just muck about offline, crashing into the AI and doing donuts for example, you can actually turn off your driver ratings. Just go to Options, General Race Settings, Ratings, and switch it to Multiplayer Only. Yes, as you can imagine, you can't just switch it off for online sessions. Which kind of sucks to be honest, because me and my teammates sometimes just want to do GT3 and GT4 wheelbarrow races, where the GT3 pushes the GT4 round in pairs and you, you try and beat the other pair of GT3s and GT4s. Not, not that we've tried. If you want more incredible minigame ideas that you can't actually do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and of course ring the bell to see future videos appear in your inbox as they are released. Until next time, keep it PI, thanks for WA, and have a great DA. Bye.